This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. Those of you who know me know that there are certain things I cannot stand for. I am against the religion of Islam and what it brought to the world, but I don't let people get away with bigotry. Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch, the the Muslims are coming man, is constantly looking for jihadis under every bed and in every closet. And he's here to warn us about an ad for Turkey. Yes, an ad for Turkey. Apparently, the supermarket chain Tesco has an agenda to spread jihad by having hijabi women in their ad. He then goes and reminds us that even peaceful Muslims can turn to jihad and attack the Christian neighbors. So we can't accept this. They take one turkey ad and the next thing you know, we're the turkey. His anti-Muslim radar is so high that even the sight of a hijabi in an advertisement is enough to push Spencer over the edge into action. Call the Brigade. A Muslim woman was spotted on TV. So you see, this innocent ad for Turkey is not so innocent after all. They have a Sharia agenda. An agenda to push Turkey, I mean Islam, into every household in Britain. Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center and for the Center for Security Policy. The British supermarket chain Tesco is getting heat for a Christmas ad featuring hijabed Muslimas. And the so-called Muslim reformer Majid Nawaz is enraged, not at Tesco, but at those who are complaining about their ad. Now, before we go any further, you need to see this ad. It's one minute long, and from the one minute, guess how much of it features these Muslim women? Two seconds. Two seconds of showing Muslims in the ad was enough to push Robert into taking action. Or something, huh? Have a guess. Oh. You did take the giblets out. Giblets. Everyone got a drink. Have you been based in it, Caroline? Yes, I have. Are you sure? Okay, it looks all right to me. I mean, this is what it should look like. Can you just get out of my kitchen, all of you? Snow is falling. All around me. Children playing. Well, thank you so much. It's the season for love and understanding. Merry Christmas. Can you get out some ketchup? No. Merry Christmas. Dad, can I take a sandwich? Oh, go on in. However you do Christmas, we've got a turkey for you. Everyone's welcome at Tesco. The British network LBC says the supermarket has responded to an outpouring of racist abuse after featuring a Muslim family in a Christmas advert. And Nawaz adds, your real agenda here, speaking to the critics, is you just want a white, nativist, non-Muslim Britain. Once again, Islam is not a race. There are Muslims of all races. Objecting to Muslims being featured in a Christmas ad is not racism. Yes, objecting to Muslims in a Christmas ad is not racism. It's bigotry, you dumbass. Oh, and by the way, there was a Sikh in the ad too. Did you have a problem with that as well? It stems from Tesco's obvious agenda in putting Muslims in the ad in the first place. The obvious agenda putting Muslims in the ad? Dude, Muslims shop at Tesco too in Christmas. Their agenda is to sell more turkey. That's why supermarkets make turkey ads. To remind non-Muslims in Britain that Muslims are there, they're there to stay, and only racist, bigoted Islamophobes would have any objection. So you just admitted that you want all Muslims out of Britain. Thank you for being honest. What do you think is a solution, Robert? The final solution. How can we get rid of all the Muslims from Britain? Surely we can't take for granted that Muslims are here to stay, right? What should we do? Deport them? Jail them? It's propaganda and manipulation disguised as an ad for Turkey. Propaganda and manipulation disguised as an ad for Turkey. It's a freaking ad for Turkey with two seconds shot of Muslims in it smiling. Two seconds, you sitting popsicle. Nawaz, meanwhile, blasts those who are unhappy about the ad. He says, 
The only conclusion I can come to is that this is driven and fueled by rising anti-Muslim sentiment that wants no Muslim presence in this country and will take any opportunity to decry and bemoan a semblance of a Muslim presence in this country. Your real agenda here is that you just want a white, nativist, non-Muslim Britain. You want to hark back to that nostalgic sense you have of a country before immigration. That's the only conclusion I can come to, because you're not happy either way. If Muslims refuse to integrate, you complain. If Muslims integrate, you complain. That tells me that there's an axe to grind, and you're grinding it. You didn't just prove Majid right about wanting a white nativist Christmas. You just expose yourself even worse. You don't just want a white Christmas. You want a Muslim-free Britain. I'm not going to call you a Nazi, even though I'm tempted after what you just admitted. But how can we take anything seriously from your mouth after you've shown that an ad for Turkey pushes you over the edge into watch out, the Muslims are coming? Really, Nawaz, that's the only conclusion you can come to? What a failure of imagination. Here's another conclusion you can come to. Non-Muslims in Britain are concerned about jihad terror and the repeated boasts from Islamic jihadists that Britain will before too long become a Sharia state. You are telling me that this Turkey advertisement shows you that Britain will become a Sharia state? That Muslims in an ad for Turkey smiling at Christmas is a sign of the impending doom that's going to face the non-Muslims in Britain? They don't see anyone in the British government or establishment media addressing those concerns adequately. No one is challenging Muslims to work for reform. Wait a second, did you just say no Muslims are working for reform? The so-called Muslim reformer Majid Nawaz is in- Hold on, what did you call him? Muslim reformer? So what do Muslim reformers do? Do they uh, try to reform Islam? Tens of thousands of British girls have been sacrificed to Muslim rape gangs operating in accord with Quranic teaching because British officials were too afraid of being called racist and Islamophobic to prosecute them. There's a point to be made here. The vast majority of child sex offenders in England and Wales are male with men representing 98% of all defendants in 2015-2016 and white with whites representing 85% of convicted child sex offenders and 86% of the general population in 2011. But the prosecutor himself did admit that the police were hesitant to pursue due process against South Asian minorities for fear of looking bad. And this is very problematic. We definitely don't want that to happen. So if you're worried about a rape epidemic, Robert, you should start with white men. Jihad preachers speak freely in mosques all over the country, often coming from other countries and having no trouble getting into Britain because barring them would be Islamophobic. Here's a list of Muslim speakers banned from the UK. Zakir Naik, Bilal Phillips, Omar Bakri, Yusuf Karadavi, and Muhammad al Dini were all banned. And guess who else was banned? Robert Spencer. Yes, Robert Spencer was banned from the UK. Oh, the irony. And while all this is going on, you tell us that Tesco featuring Muslims in a Christmas ad is a sign of integration and that we're racist for opposing it. Yes, if you are against an ad with Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, gays, blacks, atheists, white people, Chinese people, or anything else, you are acknowledging your racism and bigotry towards those groups. How can this be so hard, Robert? In reality, Every Muslim in Britain could celebrate Christmas and it would not be in the slightest degree a sign of integration. Why not? Because it's not on the point. When Muslims sincerely renounce and work against jihad terror and all the aspects of Sharia that conflict with British law, the denial of the freedom of speech, the denial of the freedom of conscience, the institutionalized discrimination against women and non-Muslims, the death penalty for gays, the stoning for adultery, the amputation of the hand for theft, and all the rest, then they're integrating. Celebrating Christmas, not integrating. Why not? Because even though the celebration of Christmas is often denounced by Muslim clerics, it does not touch upon the aspects of Islam that make non-Muslims concerned, and is not necessarily an indication that Muslims have renounced those aspects of Islam. So basically, they're not integrating until they completely condemn every terrible thing in Islam. Here's the thing, Robert. Muslims celebrating Christmas is a huge deal. 
but like Majid said, you don't want to acknowledge any sort of point in favor of Muslims because your game is to demonize them. You want to demonize Muslims no matter how irreligious, secular, or agnostic they are. You're willing to throw Muslims under the bus even if they are at the point of celebrating a kufr festival with pagan roots that is now somewhat secular, that you still deny this is a sign of integration. Muslims in many different ways to some extent or another do deny the terrible things in Islam. This is definitely the case. Either they outright condemn ISIS like the ones who signed letters to Baghdadi and all they represent, or they will say that most of these rules are out of context or no longer to be applied or only to be applied in an ideal Islamic state which doesn't exist. Some will still fundamentally believe these rules are valid. So we still have a lot of work to do and a long way to go. But all this based on a two second clip of hijabi smiling in a Christmas ad for Turkey? There are unfortunately numerous examples of Muslims who lived in close proximity to non-Muslims and were quite friendly to them until it came time for jihad. Now Robert Spencer is going to lay out a narrative for you. His narrative is even though that smiling hijabi woman has been a good neighbor and her kids play with your kids and she said Merry Christmas to your family and even gave you a nice bottle of wine. You better be ready because when the call for jihad will come, she's going to knock you over the head with that wine bottle and stab you with it. <laughs> the June 19th, 2013 edition of the New York Times carried a photo with the caption, Ibtisam Ali Aboud with her son Jafar says that her husband, a Syrian Alawite, was killed by his Sunni friend. This illustrates how the call to jihad can override all existing loyalties, such that a Syrian Alawite can suddenly be murdered by his Sunni friend. There are innumerable other examples. Boston Marathon jihadi Tamerlan Tsarnaev's September 11, 2011 throat-slitting murder of his Jewish best friend is a prominent example. An anecdote from the Ottoman Empire in the late 19th century illustrates the same point. A Muslim woman recounted, Then one night, my husband came home and told me that the Padisha had sent word that we were to kill all the Christians in our village and that we would have to kill our neighbors. I was very angry and told him that I did not care who gave such orders, they were wrong. These neighbors had always been kind to us and if he dared to kill them, Allah would pay us out. I tried all I could to stop him, but he killed them. Killed them? Oh my god, you seriously found two or three examples and you're trying to say that you can't trust any Muslim in Britain because of this? I think there should be something called jihadi under my bed syndrome because Spencer definitely has it. And I'm not even denying the problem of jihad. So yeah, Majid, you can call me racist all you want, but I don't find it a wonderful reassurance that Tesco shows us Muslims celebrating Christmas. I want to see Muslims renounce jihad terror. What are you doing? to facilitate that. I'm Robert Spencer. He's doing a lot more than you. Instead of demonizing Muslims, Majid talks to them and engages in dialogues and debates in order to win them over. He's doing the very thing you said Muslims aren't doing, reform. That's the end of his video. I want to make my position on jihad very clear. I'm not saying that jihad ter is not an issue, that we shouldn't worry about jihad, that ISIS has nothing to do with Islam, that Islam is peace. No, I'm not saying that. Islam is a doctrine that contains many violent and dangerous teachings in some of its strains. The doctrine of jihad, the doctrine of martyrdom are a stain on our world today. Many of the victims of jihad violence in the world today are Muslims. Many Muslims suffered greatly under ISIS, under Boko Haram and others. They are compelled under the violent threat to join the group or die. But many also willingly join these groups. When you have someone like John Georgialis, who spontaneously converted to Islam from rural Texas and became one of the top members in ISIS, you have to admit that Islam has a dangerous side to it. But the way to defeat this evil ideology is not by fear mongering against Turkey ads and scaring people into hating Muslims. The way to defeat it is to defeat the religion at its core, to fight its core beliefs and to show its dark side for everyone to see clearly. This is how we will defeat Jihad. I know because I've had a jihadi contact me and tell me that Abdullah Gondal's content and my content helped him to see the light and leave a terror group. I know that the efforts I am making have de-radicalized at least hundreds if not more. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new here. Give a thumbs up to the video. Leave a comment. And if you would like to see me do more, please support me on Patreon. My support page is below. If I get enough support, I can do this full time. The money does help. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir, signing out.